Hey guys, welcome to my office. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about how an airplane flies. So to start, we need to talk about the most important element of flying, which is air. Air is very, very powerful. You don't think about it much because it's invisible and it's always around us, but it's very, very strong. Here's a great example. I've got this uh, balloon inside a bottle. And I'm gonna try and blow it up. But no matter what I do, I can't blow it up. The reason is, is because there's air inside this bottle on the other side of the balloon. And when I try and blow up that balloon, there's no place for that air to go. Now you see there's a cork in the back of it. If I remove that cork, well now it's no problem. Now, check this out. The air that's trapped inside the balloon is being kept there by the air behind it. There's no way for this air to escape and so there's no way that air can get forced out. Air is very, very powerful. It's powerful enough to keep a balloon inflated inside of a bottle, and if it's going fast enough, it's powerful enough to lift an airplane up into the sky. Now, if you're going to understand how an airplane flies, you have to understand the four forces. These four forces are always acting on an airplane when it's in flight. They are lift, weight, thrust, and drag. And we're gonna talk about all four of them. To understand thrust, you need to talk about someone named Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton was a famous 16th century physicist, and he wanted to understand how the entire universe moved and worked together. Through his studies, he came up with some rules that we now call laws, his laws of motion. His third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For a demonstration on this, let's go to a friend of mine. Hi, I'm Captain Dave's friend. I'm gonna be explaining to you Newton's third law of action and reaction. To do this demonstration, I've got a gas leaf blower and a rolling chair. I'm gonna turn the gas blower on. I'm gonna be turning it on and air will be coming out this way. So that's our action. And our reaction is gonna be motion this way, backwards. Do not try this at home. I'm a little dizzy. Newton's third law. Thanks, friend. So, what does that have to do with an airplane? Well, on our aircraft, we have these things. These are our jet engines. Air gets pulled in through here. It's mixed with fuel and ignited. It expands very rapidly. And then, it goes out this way. Through here, and back like that. So, that's our action. The air going this way, and the reaction is the aircraft moves forward like that. Action, reaction. We control the amount of thrust that the engines produce by using these things, aptly called the thrust levers. You push them forward, and the engines start creating more thrust. The further we push these forward, the faster the aircraft goes. So the next force we need to talk about is drag. Drag acts opposite to thrust. In aviation, we generally try to reduce drag as much as possible because it slows us down and it also causes us to burn more fuel. A couple ways that we can do this is first off with the design of the aircraft. If you look at the nose of the airplane, you can see it's rounded. That's so that the air can flow smoothly around it, which reduces the drag. We call that aerodynamic. Car designers do the same thing. Their cars are rounded as well as designers of bicycle helmets. Those are uh, aerodynamic as well, and that reduces the drag. Another thing that we can do is raise the landing gear. Our wheels are specially designed to retract after we take off, and that really reduces drag as well. Sometimes we actually want to increase the amount of drag on the aircraft, especially if we're going too fast. 
One way that we can do that is by pulling this handle. When we do that, it raises the spoilers on the wings. That increases the drag on the aircraft, and the aircraft slows down. Moving on, the next force that we need to talk about is weight. Weight is constantly pulling the aircraft down towards the ground, and these aircraft are very, very heavy. Empty, this airplane here would weigh about 80,000 pounds. Then you have to add on the weight of the fuel and the passengers and the bags. And once that's done, this aircraft can take off at over 170,000 pounds. Now, a lot of people will compare that to the weight of elephants, like that's 29 air elephants. But I've never lifted an elephant, so I don't really know what that means. However, I did lift my daughter's backpack, and that thing weighed about 25 pounds. So this aircraft on takeoff weighs as much as 6,800 backpacks, which is a lot of homework. The force that counteracts all that weight and helps keep us in the air is called lift. To understand lift, you have to understand someone named Daniel Bernoulli. Daniel Bernoulli was a famous Swiss physicist uh, who worked mostly with fluids. One of the things that he discovered was how fluid behaved when it went faster. Imagine you have a garden hose and imagine that you crimp it in the middle so that it's tighter and there's less space for that water to flow through. Well, you probably know that that water will go faster especially if you've ever put your thumb over the end of a garden hose. What Bernoulli discovered was that when the water goes through that crimped section, that the pressure that it put on the sides of that hose became much smaller. Now, what does that have to do with an airplane? Well, if you remove the hose part of this drawing, you can see that it's shaped just like our airplane wing. When we are flying, the air acts a lot like a fluid. It goes under the wing and above the wing. However, because the top of the wing is rounded, it has to go faster, so it's able to exert less pressure. So now we have an imbalance of forces. We have high pressure below the wing and low pressure above the wing. Anytime that you have an imbalance of forces, it creates motion. High pressure below the wing and low pressure above the wing create an imbalance of forces, which creates motion upwards, which we call lift. Here's another demonstration of the Bernoulli effect by another friend of mine. Hi, I'm Captain Jameson's other friend. We're gonna demonstrate the Bernoulli effect. To do that, you just need three things. A hair dryer, a ping pong ball, and a toilet paper roll. All right, to do this, all you have to do is turn the hair dryer on, and then you stick the ball on the airflow. That ball will float right in there. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that's just because the air is hitting the bottom of the ball, but we can take it and turn it, and it'll still keep floating. If you take the toilet paper roll and put it on top, the air has to rush even faster to get through that tube. And it shoots it right out. Back to you, Captain Dave. Pretty cool. So, here's our airplane in flight. If we're staying at the same height above the ground, which we call the altitude, well, that means that the amount of lift created by our wings is equal to the amount of weight that's pulling the airplane down. So we're staying level. If I want to increase my altitude, I raise the nose like this. When I raise the nose, that makes the air on top of the wing go even faster. That lowers that pressure. We have another imbalance of forces and the aircraft climbs up. To do this, we use our control circuit. Have you ever been riding in a car and stuck your hand out the window? If you haven't, try it. But ask your mom and dad first. Also, never do it in an airplane. Anyway, when you're driving down the road and you go like this, your hand's going to move up and back. That's because the air is hitting the bottom of your hand and then bouncing downwards. That's our action and that's our reaction. Action, reaction. It's rising heat and strikes again. So on the airplane, we do much the same thing, except we use special taps. We control them using these. Now, if I want to use, if I want to go up in altitude, what I do is I pull back on this yoke like this. And that raises these special tabs right here. They're called elevators. The air will hit it, it will push down on the tail, it will raise the nose, and the aircraft will go up. If I want to descend, I push forward. That will lower the elevator, air will hit it, it will push the tail up, the nose will go down and the aircraft will descend. If I want to roll the aircraft, I do this. That controls special tabs out here on the ends of the wings called ailerons.
these actually work opposite to each other. So if I want to turn left, I roll like this. This side, this aileron will go down. This one will go up. This wing will rise. This wing will descend. And the aircraft will roll by doing that. And finally, the last control surface that we need to talk about is right here on the tail. It's called the rudder. To control the rudder, I press on these pedals down here. And when that moves, that creates a motion like this that we call yaw. When we're turning the aircraft, we actually use the ailerons and rudders together. So we'll turn and we'll press on the pedal. The aircraft will roll and yaw and it'll be a nice smooth turn. Now that we've learned all about the four forces of flight and the flight control surfaces, let's see how they all work together when we do a takeoff. Now that you've learned all about the four forces of flight, let's see how they all work together when an airplane does a takeoff. When we are ready to go, we taxi onto the runway and line ourselves up on the center line. When tower clears us for takeoff, Southwest 246, RNAV to dreads, runway 28 right, clear for takeoff. RNAV to dreads, 28 right, clear for takeoff. The pilot flying pushes the thrust levers forward. This spools up the engines, which creates thrust. The airplane begins moving down the runway, faster and faster. Air begins to move over and under the wing. Thanks to Mr. Bernoulli, we now know that faster moving air over the wing exerts less pressure, creating lift. When a safe speed is reached, the pilot flying pulls back on the yoke. This deflects the elevator upwards, pushing the tail down and the nose up. This makes the air on top of the wing go even faster, which creates so much lift that it counteracts the weight of the airplane and we leave the ground. Finally, we raise the landing gear to reduce our drag. So, as you can see, all four forces of flight are involved in a takeoff. So the next time that you are at 30,000 feet on a Southwest Airlines flight, remember, it's all because of lift, weight, thrust, and drag.